We need to be faithful. A lot of people can say a lot of things about this church. They can say we're not in the will of God because we've been here for this many years and we don't have that many people. Well, let's use that. Okay, let's see if that makes sense. Biblically, not in the world. If this was a business, then I'd agree with them. If I was here to get a salary, oh, trust me, I would have cashed it in a long time ago. <laughs> okay. But Noah preached righteousness for 120 years. Yes, he did. And the only people that got saved was his family. And one of those backslid. But those were the only ones that made it onto the boat. Wait a minute. Jesus preached to the multitudes. Jesus himself preached to the multitudes. At one point he had 70 disciples that followed him all over. But when everything was done and said, how many did he have? 12. 11. 11. 11. And really, 10. Because when he got crucified, even Peter wasn't around. But Peter came back. So, are we in this church to run a dash or a sprint? Are we living for God? To do a relay race, to only be here for a little while, and then maybe I can get on the phone and call another pastor to take over? Okay. And Millie's saying right now, the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, three million of them. How many that left Egypt actually walked into the promised land? Two. Two. Oh, wait a minute. There ain't nobody in their church. That can't be of God. Well, then Noah wasn't of God. Joshua and Caleb wasn't of God then. Or actually, Moses. If you're going by that logic. If you're going by that kind of logic, then Jesus himself, according to that logic, wasn't of God. We need to realize that in this church, in this faith, in this walk, that things will get hard. It's not easy to run a 20, 25 mile race. It's not easy to keep a steady pace. It's not easy to take a cup of water and dump it on your head because you know drinking it's going to slow you down. Drinking it might cause you cramps. It's not easy to do that when you just want to sit on the bench and enjoy that water. But you have to run the marathon. It's not easy when you're living your life and you say, Devla, I'm trying as hard as I can to do everything that I need to do to be a Christian, but this is happening and that is happening. And Devla, it's hard. You're not in a dash. You're not in a relay. No one can take over for you. The Bible says you have to work out your soul, own soul salvation with fear and trembling. You have to keep a steady pace. Closing, Mark 13.10 says this, 13.10 through 13. For the good news must first be preached to all nations. But when ye are arrested and stand trial, when you are arrested and stand trial, this is New Living Translation, don't worry in advance about what to say. Just say what God tells you at that time. For it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. A brother will betray his brother to death, and a father will betray his own child. And children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. And everyone will hate you because you are my followers. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. The one who endures for the first hundred yards the one who endures for the first year. The one who endures for five years. The one who endures until it gets hard. No! He who endures to the end shall be saved. To the end. Charlie, for everybody in this church, 
And for everybody who's going to watch on the internet, you need to endure to the end. You need to run this race as you're in a marathon with patience. Let's pray. I magnify you, Father, and I exalt you, sweet Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord God, that you would be with us, Lord, and you would help us to keep a steady pace. That you would help us, Lord, not to take a break. Help us, Lord, not to relax. Help us, Lord God, to know when to drink the water and to know when we need to dump it on our head. Lord God, help us to understand what we need at what time and where we need to be. Help us, Father, to win this race. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.